in a kind of a, you know, collaborative spirit in a kind of regenerative way. Um, so yeah, a lot of potential there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and in, in terms of industry, maybe I could get into a little bit more about the the kind of products we're looking at um, and some things we're we're exploring. Would y'all like to? Uh, yeah, I think that's actually in our. I don't think we asked. Uh, did we ask that? Well, we were just we were wondering about um, like some of the uses that you promote and teach about, which I'm assuming is also going to tie into what you yourself yeah. are doing with it. Yeah, yeah, same deal. So, right, the roots I talked about a little bit, and the root starch. So the roots have a very high starch content. I don't know if it's very high. I mean, when you compare it to others, kind of like starch, starchy roots that are um kind of industrialized root crops for starch it's a, it's a little bit lower but for a wild crop it's got a pretty high starch content and um it's been a long time since i've actually gone through the whole starch extraction process a few years now so i i think i might have my numbers wrong but i want to say it's something like six to seven percent uh of the of the fresh weight Yield, you'll get in your in a, a dry starch yield. So if you harvest 100 pounds of kudzu, you'll put up six to seven pounds of dried starch. Mm -hmm. And this is a really amazing um, uh, material. It's like very unique as a cooking starch. It's got this very silky kind of quality that you don't really get from other cooking starches. And it's it's alkaline. Most most cooking starches are quite acidic, like corn starch mm -hmm. or agar. Um, and so that alkaline quality, I think kind of probably contributes to its, I don't know, silkiness or, or it's kind of unique, um, quality in food, but also the alkaline nature makes it very soothing and calming or, or uh, cooling, um, internally. And it's got a long list of uses in, in traditional Chinese medicine and then in kind of modern western medicine there's a good bit of of research that's gone into kudzu st root starch for all kinds of different applications um you can spend a good few hours going down uh google scholar wormhole and learning all about the research that's go going to the different uses of, of the many different kudzu parts of kudzu but um yeah lo lots of different applications for the starch and then the whole root, which I say whole root in just kind of herbalist terms, we actually cut it and, and or shred it, but it's, you know, the entire root, not processed further than that, than just drying it. That is a product that we have been pursuing most kind of seriously as what we think of uh, as something that could like actually become profitable enough to kind of keep doing and then perhaps be a, a reasonable source of funding for our organization. We've been selling fresh whole root and dry whole root. And we sell that both for culinary and for medicinal purposes. The medicine part of the whole root, again, it's like in traditional Chinese medicine, really highly valued herb, the uh, kudzu root. We've spoken to some uh, TCM practitioners here in Asheville and we have one friend who was saying that of the hundred plus herbs that he uses consistently, kudzu is among the top 20 that he uses wow. in a lot of his formulations for lots of different things. And so I'm not a herbalist. I don't, I, it's hard for me to keep all the, that information in my brain. But one of the things that was really pretty impactful and kind of set us off on the path of really pursuing the whole root as a medicine, as a product for us was so we have kudzu root camp typically in March and we arrived at kudzu root camp in, I don't know, everything's a blur now, but I think it was 2020 when, uh, the old, yeah. old pandemic struck yeah. and, um, we were at Zev's childhood home where his dad still lives in, in a kudzu patch. We arrived there the day before the World Health Organization announced that we were in a global pandemic and we all were kind of, you know, like the rest of the world kind of panicked and didn't know what to do and thought we would go home. We sat on it for a day. And then 
Of okay, course, that day, Stephen Herod Buner, who's a pretty influential herbalist, American herbalist and researcher, yeah. uh, had published a paper he wrote on the Chinese approach, basically what herbs they're using in China to treat COVID. And kudzu was among those herbs. Wow. And I think he even gave our group a little shout out in a social media post about Ooh. it. And uh, we started to get inquiries from around the country about like how much kudzu could they, could we possibly send them? Like, can you send us, you know, 40 pounds of dry oh, kudzu? Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I don't think there was anything quite like that, but it was, it, people were asking for a lot. And, um, you know, it was like orders of magnitude more than we could supply, but we decided to stay. It was like, all right, this is the best place for us to be right now. You know, like you can't get good, clean kudzu root fresh basically anywhere. Um, as much kudzu root as there is in the country, there's no, uh, there's no commercial vendor of kudzu roots domestically. You can import it from China and a lot of herbalists are a little bit, you know, not so hot on importing herbs from China where the environmental re regulation is often quite right. a bit more lax. And so, you know, there's a lot more contamination, et cetera. You know, we were the only game in town basically, and people were wanting to get kudzu, a lot of community herbalists who are like, you know, wanting to stock up and, and, and be ready to, to help their community deal with the pandemic. So yeah, we stuck around and, and we were, we were just digging kudzu roots and shipping them all over the country as fast as we could. Wow. Um, wow. And yeah, so that was a good kind of like, okay, there's a real need for this. There's a real demand for it. This is a really good place to put our, our energy. And still we get a good bit of orders for fresh roots. I mean, we didn't see the continued demand after 20, 20, I think even the following year was a lot lower than the demand was that we were seeing. Yeah. So kudzu, kudzu roots whole or dried used in traditional Chinese medicine for all kinds of things, including viral respiratory infection. The kudzu juice is a pretty interesting thing. This is basically the root is pretty 